Hey YouTubers, thanks for tuning back into another episode. Tonight we're going to be doing a little bit of a how-to video. So I've got some of Chris Boyette's epoxy block fill and an empty engine block here. So let's go ahead and roll the intro and dive right into it. and girls what we have here is an engine block that's been to the machine shop ideally whenever you're doing this you should do it whenever it's ready to assemble so whatever you're going to have done to it go ahead and do that first because once you do this ideally you want to be able to let it cure and then go ahead and assemble the engine and put it in the car now it's not going in this car but for this example purposes this here has got a fresh bore a fresh hone it's basically ready to assemble. So what we've done here is we've taped off our water pump spot because we don't actually have a water pump on it yet that we want to, it's not. So if you have a stock water pump, you could use it, um, but you don't want to ruin a new water pump to be able to do this. So you can tape it off. If you don't have your, uh, your coolant pipe here on the back, you'll need to tape it off as well. And then from here on, we're going to dive right into the instructions that Chris sends. So let's go ahead and get those handy. So guys, here's basically what you get in the kit. It doesn't include the salt, but <clears throat> you're going to get the actual epoxy and then you're going to get some hardener. I had him split it for two different like batches. Um, so this is actually twice as much as what you would need for you know one engine. So this will do two. Here is Chris's contact information if you guys want to purchase some of this stuff on your own. Over here are the instructions that he sends. So clean block surface and water jacket. We've already done that because it's been in the machine shop. Cover block surface with masking tape, then remove with razor blade the water jacket opening. We haven't done that yet, but we have plugged the water pump port with aluminum foil or something of that nature. So like in this case, we're gonna put salt down in that hole so we don't have to necessarily worry about it. So the way that it's set up, we need to go ahead and tape the top of the, the deck of the block. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So guys, this is what you'll end up with here after you tape the block. What we're going to do is we're actually going to like cut out around this with a razor blade. So that way the actual sleeve stays covered in tape. So does the block medium surface, but just the water jacket is open so we can pour our salt down into that because that's the next step. So let's go ahead and cut these out real quick. everything's cut out so it's just exposing the water jackets so let's move on to the next step here fill the water jacket with salt or sugar until about three-fourths of an inch remains be sure block is level use a screwdriver to level the salt out or sugar so we need to right now to go ahead and check to make sure our block is level because it's obviously not and then from that point we're going to then go ahead and start pouring in our salt because that's what we're using. All right, guys, so the block is level. So you may have to get creative if you're using an engine stand like I am. So I needed some cardboard to shim it, a little baby pallet, but she's level. So now we can pour the salt in and go ahead and leave, you know, roughly, what was it? A three quarters of an inch from the top and then spread it out with a screwdriver. So after one can of salt, and these are 26 ounces. So 26 ounces, one can of salt, we're almost where we need to be. So now what I need to do is go ahead 
and level this out so we've got roughly three quarters of an inch at the top. So down here you can see in the corner, if you guys can make it out, that's where the water pump passage is. So we need to go ahead and make sure there's more salt over here guarding that so any epoxy doesn't go in there. old Honda bolt and from the bottom of this washer to the end of the actual bolt is right at the space that we need so this will allow me to go through here and show and actually see how much of this salt I have in here so that way I know so I don't know if you guys can tell Let's see if I can get it. let me turn the flashlight on here see here it's not touching the uh, sand <laughs> it's not touching the salt yet so we need to add a little bit more salt so that way we can have this right where we need it all right so guys using this little bolt that I mentioned I went ahead and I dug around in here and I got a lot of excess salt out so if you're doing this at home do it sparingly so don't put a lot of salt in um, just add to it as you go get something like this to be able to check your depth right now we've got the block basically where it needs to go we're going to check it again just to make sure she's level she's close there pretty close there too so i'm fine with that i can leave with that so what we're going to do now is we're going to mix up the epoxy so mix epoxy in small batches. Um, in this case, we're gonna mix half and one, and then until it's a light blue color, use all of the hardener because of our batch. Pour epoxy into the jackets. I prefer to use a small funnel. The epoxy, the epoxy will rest. You want to build up in flat stages. If you spill epoxy on anything, clean it up immediately. After 30 minutes or so, remove tape use a paper towel to clean the block surface. I'll allow epoxy to cure for at least eight hours at no lower than 60 degrees. The warmer, the better. Cold temps will increase cure time. So right now, because it's winter, we're gonna to have to allow for longer than uh, eight hours. When epoxy is fully cured, place head gasket over the block surface, then mark the water ports the gaskets with the marker, use a drill bit, yada, yada, yada. Wash the salt or sugar out of the block thoroughly. I use the car wash, then you're done. So guys, our next step is to mix half of our quart along with hardener and then pour it in. Uh, Chris mentions that um, pour epoxy into the jacket. I prefer to use a small funnel. The epoxy will rest. You want to build it up in flat stages. So we're going to pour a little bit and then a little bit and then a little bit, I believe, is kind of how we're going to do it. Um, so we're going to mix some epoxy. Let's get to it. That is half of the epoxy. I didn't quite get half mixed the first time. So in that time lapse, you probably saw me mix a little bit more. So the engine's level, this is leveling out. Here in just a few minutes, I'm actually gonna pull the tape off 
and then um, I'm gonna reread the instructions just to make sure I didn't miss it. So guys, this hasn't been very complicated. You know, a lot of the work's gonna be done either by washing the engine or just like trying to follow along. And a lot of it's gonna be your nerves, but it's really not that hard. Um, the big thing here is we need to wait 30 minutes for it to kind of start to harden. Uh, and then once it starts to harden, we'll uh, go ahead and remove our tape and just make sure everything's clean before it fully cures uh, because then there's no going back. So. We got 30 minutes to go and then we'll uh, do a little bit of unwrapping and see what it looks like. So guys, 30 minutes has passed. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the masking tape here. Um, this stuff here is like kind of jelly. Um, so it should stay in place and then we should be able to just kind of clean off the excess. Um, we wanna remove this while it's still, you know, a liquid form. So let's go ahead and do it. guys it wasn't that bad um, right now we're in the curing stage so where I'm at it's definitely winter so we're gonna have to turn the heat on for this little guy it needs to be at minimum 60 degrees um, for at least eight hours if it's colder than that or if it's cooler than that then it has to take longer to cure so right now it's basically just a waiting game so Part two of this will be laying our head gasket on it and actually drilling our coolant holes. So leave me a comment with any questions you guys have. Um, I'm told Chris I do this video uh, in kind of a favor for some trade off on a discount. So if, uh, if you guys are interested in it, go pick up the product. It works real well. His instructions are pretty well laid out. It's super inexpensive. Uh, he does real well with his S2000 and the J-Swap. So a lot of good stuff that uh, I've seen him use this on. So guys, for now, um, you know, this is it, so to speak. So we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.